Hey, I'm Caleb from You Can Make This Too. Thank you for joining me. Without a doubt, this is one of the biggest furniture projects I've ever done. And I've got to say, I'm really happy to have this bunk bed out of my shop and have my shop back. Let me show you how you can make this too. Normally my first step in the shop is to grab a notebook and start sketching out critical dimensions for the project. But this one called for a slightly larger canvas. But once I had a plan, it quickly moved to the typical breaking down sheet goods with my track saw and then cutting to size of the table saw and miter saw. If this project has a theme, it's space management. Building a project this size really pushed my shop to the limit. The one thing I always hear about my shop from people I invite to my space though is, wow, it's a lot smaller than I thought. It looks bigger on camera. Well, I know. I know. My joinery of choice for this project is pocket screws. So I bust out my little Craig jig with grip trainer and spend the rest of the week drilling pocket holes. But I think you get the idea, so let me go ahead and jump to assembly. This build took four sheets of three quarter inch plywood. So to save cost, I used pine plywood instead of the cabinet grade ply that I normally use, since I'll be painting everything anyway. But much to my surprise, it wasn't perfectly flat. So to aid in assembling the bookshelves and drawer and closet combo, I made this 90 degree fence to put on my assembly table. This helps hold the pieces and lets me push against the tabletop or the fence as needed to force the pieces flat as I screw them together. The fence worked great for things that need to meet flush, but for stuff like these shelves, I cut spacer blocks and use them as a guide to keep everything square as I assemble. After the bookshelf assembly is together, I switch and put together the structure of the drawer and closet combination. The drawers are all just going to run on wood runners. I make these and the dividers from more 3 quarter inch plywood and again use spacers to keep everything equally spaced. The front dividers get pocket screwed into place and the runners I just use wood glue and staple into place. I added a spacer to the bottom of the closet opening to keep it square. It seems short, but that's because I measured it to fit the back because the plywood isn't flat, so this is actually kind of out there and wonky in the wind, so this piece is going to pull it back into square. Now to the part I was dreading a bit, cutting out the stair sides. I opted for stairs because my boys are fairly young still, and that seemed like a safer option than a ladder for them. And it also offers space for drawers, which is something lacking in the room right now. So after I marked out the stair pattern, I cut the lines freehand with my circular saw and stopped at the line, but because the blade is a circle, it didn't cut all the way through, so I finished off the cuts with a handsaw. Again I'm using pocket holes to hold the stairs together, so the next step is getting the holes drilled in the sides and all the bracing pieces. Once we started assembly, the fence for my assembly table came in handy again screwing the shelves on. My oldest was off for Christmas break while I was working on this, and he was really happy to get to help build his bunk bed. But pretty soon you'll notice some things getting painted, that's because this was still kind of early in the process and we ran out of things he could really help with. So we started covering everything with the paint that Deco Art was kind enough to provide for this build. As we finish screwing on the shelves, you'll notice the whole thing is a bit wobbly. That's where adding some bracing on the back and bottom comes in. That'll make everything a lot more rigid. You'll have to forgive me for the subpar shots here though. I know we blocked the camera a bit, but I was really more focused on sharing the process with my son at this point than getting the best documentation of it. The stairs will have drawers inside them, so I needed to add runners to the sides. Once again, I'm just using some plywood strips for this. These were a little trickier though. I'll be adding a pad over the stair treads, so the runners need to be spaced slightly above the plywood tread to allow clearance for the drawer so they don't catch on that pad. So I just use a piece of eighth inch hardboard to keep everything consistent as I brad nailed the runners into place. All of the drawers for this build are made the same, just sized a bit differently as needed. First I ripped all the drawer sides, 
Then I cut a dado in the bottom of each drawer that'll receive the bottom. I just show one pass, but it took two passes to make this wide enough for the hardboard bottoms. Then I cut a rabbit on each end of the drawer front and back pieces. The sides will rest in these, which makes assembly a lot easier because I don't have to worry about holding things perfectly in place. When I started assembling the drawers, I ran into a little oopsie and realized I'd cut the drawer bottoms a little too big. Apparently I messed up the math with the dados, but hey, better too big than too small. So once I fixed the drawer bottoms, they went together really fast. You can see how the rabbits help hold the drawer together as I assemble and brad nail them. The drawers for the stairs get a cut out as a handle. I figured if anything stuck out on these, my kids would eventually hurt their feet or, you know, break off the handles. So I just made a simple template to transfer the simple design of a handle and then cut them out with a jigsaw and sanded everything smooth. For the other drawers, I used regular pools. I used a scrap piece of hardboard to make a template to drill some pilot holes from the inside of the drawer box then followed that pilot hole with the right size bit from the front. This makes sure that any blowout will be on the inside of the drawer, and then I just screwed on the pulls. Now for adding the cushion to the stair tread. I ordered some 2mm EVA foam to do this. My goal was something that was soft enough for bare feet to be comfortable on, but had enough grip that, you know, socks wouldn't slide. And this stuff fit the bill perfectly, and it's my first time working with it. To attach it, I used contact cement. I just spread a liberal amount on both sides and used an off coat of the foam to spread it around. After about 15 minutes, the surface is a little tacky, and that's when the two pieces go together and create a permanent bond. And as I usually do, I cut everything oversized and then trimmed the foam to fit after I had it in place. The railing and trim were easily the most time consuming part of this build. I wanted them to have a ladder look to go with the fire truck fire station theme, but also meet the safety requirements for a rail. I'm not going to get into it here, but I'll link below to the Consumer Product Safety Commission's rules for bunk beds if you're interested in looking at that. The rails and trim are made from 2x material that I ripped down into 1x material. I made the rail with a lot of pocket holes. But in hindsight, I think downing them together probably would have been a better choice. Not for strength, just so I wouldn't have had to fill all these pocket holes. The trim was a bit tricky. Obviously, the whole assembly is too big to move through doorways, so I had to figure out the best strategy for what to install in my shop and what to install in the room. Some of the trim is what the railing will be partly secured to, so I brad nailed it in place, but then followed up with screws for strength. There's really not much more to say about the trim, but it really pulls the piece together, so I'll shut up and let you watch me do it. Getting the piece in the room took a lot longer than I anticipated. When I cleared out the room, I remembered that the room had been decorated around all of the touch-up spots and holes from the previous owner, so the installation went on hold while I repainted the room. You'll notice the mattress supports for the top bunk are running longwise instead of across the span. That's just because that's what made sense for this application. The mattress still has plenty of support. Normally, the supports run across the width because that's the shortest span to support a mattress and that's the economic choice for a material. But in this case, the span between the cabinets is about the same as the span of the width. So I don't need to use stronger material to go longwise. And running the supports across the width the normal way would have required me adding another rail to support them on, which would have raised the mattress even higher. All right. So now jumping to the lower bunk. Here I'm installing the rails onto the sides that'll hold the mattress supports. Nothing crazy, just brad nails followed by screws for strength. I'm going for a fire truck look with the bottom bunk, 
So I cut out some wheels to be feet and raise the sides off the floor a bit. This will make it easier to slide out when changing sheets and whatnot. All the wheels get some edge banding after they're cut so the paint will look better. After the paint dries, I attach the wheels to the sides with brad nails and screws. I clamp a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to the bottom of the side as I do this to make sure that each wheel provides the same amount of standoff from the floor. Now I start painting all of the pieces that will really give the bottom bunk the fire truck look. Off camera, I edge banded and painted all the edges black, and now the faces are getting the appropriate colors. All of these pieces are just aesthetic, so once I get them laid out in place, I just use plenty of brad nails to hold them in place. After the windows, grill, and lights are tacked on, I come back and wrap the whole headboard and trim to finish it off and tie it into the rest of the build. Putting together the bottom bunk goes really fast. Earlier I drilled pocket holes off camera, so I just screw the sides to the footboard and then the sides to the headboard. Throw in the mattress supports, which are the normal way this time because it's the shortest span, and add the mattress. The last finishing touch is the closet. Off camera I installed a closet rod inside the closet area, and to make the doors I just add some overlay hinges and pulls to some half inch plywood. Unfortunately, I won't be able to resource the doors like I did the rest of the red panels, but that's okay. And after I install the doors off camera, the whole thing is done. And that's all folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. If you wanna help support the channel, there's several links below that allow you to do that. I wanna thank Deco Art for supplying me the paint. And until next time, make time to make something.